Happy Yule OSS. I am so missing everyone, but I was asked to do something for Yule and what is normal my tradition for Yule. And it's to make a pineapple upside down cake. It's something my mama always made during the holidays. It's sweet, it's fattening, it's fabulous. My little twist on it is I make it look like a sun as the sun is getting stronger coming back to us. So what we're doing today is a recipe I got from my mama. She supposedly got it passed down to her from her mama. So it's a little tweaking because we are gluten-free nowadays. So our ingredients is gluten-free Hillsberry. And because gluten-free cake mix is a little grainy, I add whatever brand you can get, whatever's your favorite, French vanilla pudding, instant, to it. That's what I have in this bowl. Mix your dry ingredients up first. Because you want that pudding to be completely incorporated in with the actual mix. And then, in a separate bowl, because the box calls for three eggs. Have my three eggs here. Pour it in the bowl. And it also calls for a cup of water. I don't use water in my pineapple upside down cake. For my canned pineapple, I pull apart, pull about a cup of the juice. If it's a little under a cup, you can put a little bit of water with it to make it a cup. But you pull all of that juice out of the can. That goes in with your eggs. And then the box says a third cup oil. I prefer coconut oil. It has a better flavor and it's a little better on your cholesterol. But I grew up with vegetable oil. So whatever handy oil you have, make sure it's a liquid. I have used lard in mine that has a really good flavor. Pretty much any oil. Mix it up, incorporate the eggs. It doesn't have to be real mixed up, just a little bit. And all of this is done by hand, not fancy equipment. Remember, old school. You pour your liquid mix in with your cake mix. I like wooden spoons. Anyone who's been in my kitchen knows I have a lot of them. And it's just a family thing. My mom grew up on wooden spoons and cast iron, which we will be using. And I still do it today, and I taught my girls how to do it with wooden spoons. As you notice, this is not as runny as a regular cake mix, uh, a regular gluten cake mix. That's okay. Doesn't have to be. Just follow the directions on the box. As long as it is all mixed in and smooth. And what you're missing is the smell because this is yummy pineapple smell right now. So that's the mix. Go ahead and come over to the stove. Preheat your oven to 350. Let it get nice and hot. I have a 14 inch cast iron pan. I prefer the one with the double handles. My wrist cannot handle picking this up with all the cake in it without the double handles. Turn it on medium. You need a whole stick of butter. I prefer room temp so it doesn't start browning before it melts completely. <clears throat> and just keep, keep it moving, don't let it get burnt. Anyone who's worked with cast iron knows that it gets hot and it gets hot quick. And that's kind of what we want to do. And while it's still, the butter in a little bit of solid state, rub it along the sides of your skillet. If you don't, your cake will might stick to it. Sure the burner's on. 
I know several of y'all have had my pineapple upside down cake at some of our potlucks. This is kind of the secret. It is not diabetic friendly. Do not try to use the sugar substitutes. It will not caramelize. You also, margarine does not taste good. You need real butter for this. Margarine has more liquids than butter does. And you want all of this fat and grease there. So, not diet friendly, not diabetic friendly. It's just the way it is. It's the holidays splurge <laughs> with moderation. When the butter's almost all melted, about a cup of light brown sugar packed into your butter. Break it up. Mix it in real well. Make sure there's no clumps. And using a wooden spoon again, your cast iron will get hot. You don't want to use metal on it. Not for this. And if you use plastic, I have seen plastic melt. And don't use one of the fancy spatulas. That melts right off. And as you're stirring it, breaking up all the clumps, you're trying to get that butter and sugar to meld together to be one. And if you notice, some of my butter's not, so you may have to add more than a cup of brown sugar. This is not a recipe that you can go by every time. It's, it's by sight and smell. And if you really like that caramely bits, you can add more brown sugar and butter to make it more. Turn it up from medium to medium high because now we need it to get nice and golden. Right now, if you're feeling it, it's the sugar is grainy. You need to heat it up enough with the butter that it loses that grainy feel. And the only way to do that is to make caramel. FYI, this is a quick caramel recipe that you can pour and drizzle on pretty much anything. If you notice, it's a rolling boil. And if you're smelling it, it will smell like you've heated up caramels from the little square caramels. That's what it smells like. Don't let it burn. Keep stirring it. And it will slowly get darker and you'll finally stop feeling the graininess of the sugar. It takes a couple of minutes. And the longer you're stirring it like this, you can continue until you get what you want. you get it to the consistency you want. And that's about the consistency. You turn it off. Leave it on the stove. Your pineapples have one hole you put it directly in the center careful this is bubbling hot it will burn you and the rest of them you cut the slices 
in half. And you place it around like rays on a sun. It also lets you be able to have a perfect guide of when you're cutting the pineapple upside down cake. I do not use marshino cherries like my mama did. I found out how they're made. It's gross and I don't like them. So keep placing your pineapple all the way around. You can add more or less, depends on the sizes of the pieces you want to make. See how pretty that is? Next, while it's still hot, because it, it's still boiling, if you're using a regular gluten cake, it pours out perfect. If you're not, and it's a, on the right, it's thick like this. You spoon it out. You do it slowly, and you have to be careful of how you kind of sp spread it so you don't dislodge your pineapple pieces. Because however they look like now is how they're going to come out. And you just work it a little till you get it in the placing you want. Take your time. Because if you go real fast at this part, especially with the gluten freeze, you dislodged every single pineapple piece and you don't like the way that'll look. Because then it doesn't look like a sun. Remember, don't eat your batter. It has eggs in it, raw eggs. So now that it's nice and pretty and in the pan, boiling hot, careful of how you pick up your cast iron. Bottom shelf, 350 oven. for the length of time it says on the box. So the Pillsbury gluten-free box says for a, I usually go with a, nine, a 13 by nine pan, says 38 minutes, 34 to 38. Keep it in the oven until the uh, toothpick comes out clean in the very center. Yes, it's going to get darker than what a traditional cake is, but what you see Remember, it's going to be on the bottom and no one will know. So, I'm going to pause you for right now and we'll get back whenever it comes out of the oven. Welcome back. If you're actually going to be making this, it's about 35 minutes later. I stuck a knife in the cake, came out clean, and then so I pulled it out. This is the pretty, pretty cake. It is bubbling and boiling when it first comes out. So please do not attempt what I'm about to do right away. It has set about five minutes. I ran a knife around the edges when it was still bubbling hot, just to make sure that nothing stuck. But you don't want it to cool completely because if you do, then what's on the bottom won't come out. Put your cake pan on top. Gloves, cast iron's hot. If you've never done this before, you may want someone's help. 
because this can be the tricky part. Pick it up, flip it over. And then what I do, take a dish towel, nice and cold and wet, put it on the bottom. That'll help cool off the cast iron. Yeah, I know you're not supposed to get cast iron wet, so forth. I do. I also wash it, but I also oil it every time I use it. So. Cool your cast iron a little bit. Do a prayer to the gods, because you need it. Lift straight up. And if you notice, this happens frequently. That's okay. Take your little bits. And you put them back on while it's nice and hot all over. And you're having to work with this while it's still bubbling hot, people. So be careful because you can get a second degree burn just from the sugars. You wanna smear this yummy stuff back on the cake. Because if anyone's ever had pineapple upside down cake, as it cools, this caramel that you created it's nice and crunchy, and it tastes oh so good. And yes, I use my fingers, but I've washed them. And there you have it, people. If you look down, it looks like a sun. So recap on the ingredients. Yellow box cake. It could be just any old yellow box cake, doesn't matter what brand it is. The ingredients that are on the back for that same yellow box cake. Where it says water, take the juice from the sliced pineapple. Make sure it's not the heavy syrup pineapple, just regular pineapple juice and use that as your water substitute. If you're using a gluten-free, one thing I have found over the years, I always put a pudding mix in it. It makes it not as grainy and definitely more moist. A cup of, uh, or a stick of butter, a cup plus of packed brown sugar, and love and time and effort. So, enjoy. I am sending this home to my kids so they can eat it because I'm not eating all of that cake by myself. And I hope to see everyone soon. Have a happy holidays. Bye.